It's been a little over a decade since I last played with these. So this is bringing back some really awesome memories right now. But Lego Star Wars, just over a decade ago, made a line of microfighters that they entitled the Ship and Planet series. There were a total of two series before it got discontinued. And each of these come with this sphere ball that you could either stand on your shelf with them, and it does look really cool on display, or even hang from your shelf or ceiling. But I have a total of six builds, only five of the planets. I only got five of these when they were on store shelves. It was like an Asda's or an Argos, and you could probably guess which one wasn't available. It was the Titan Scepter because of that Death Star model that I tried to pick up for this video, but I could only get the top half of it on Bricklink. So maybe one day I'll own it, but today is not that day. As I said, I got five of these when they were out, and they did come out around that 2012 period where we were getting sets like the TIE Fighter that I've reviewed previously and that Clone Walker Battle Pack, which is still one of my favorite sets, being the first one that I ever picked up. But the focus today is on these. If you would like to see me review Series 2 after this, I don't own any of Series 2, though, as with most of these, not a lot of them have exclusive parts and minifigures, and the hardest parts to get a hold of are both the planets and the exclusive printed tile. That's right. Even over a decade ago, we were getting printed tiles with LEGO. So I'm not quite sure exactly what happened with the UCS sets. Maybe because they're bigger, they weren't printing them. But I would also like to take the anniversary minifigures from both five years ago and this year and turn them into a Planet series of sorts. So if this video gets 100 likes, I will be turning the 2019 20th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars minifigures into Ship and Planet Microfighters. First up, let's take a look at the Royal N1 Starfighter. And if you weren't as lucky as me to get the full series, or at least to even open these as it has been a while ago, these planets split in half and there's enough room on the inside to fit all the parts from the model. And I do believe that's where the plastic bags that held all the Lego bricks came from. But for this N1 Starfighter, they are a bit loud clicking together and pulling apart. We did get the planet of Naboo and also a Naboo pilot, which keen eyed viewers will notice that's exactly what it says on the plaque at the front. Royal N1 Starfighter, check. Naboo pilot, check. And Naboo, triple check. So it's nice that they've detailed everything. Speaking of detail, there's a lot of detail on the planet and you'll notice that it lines up almost perfectly with the northern and summer's northern and summer northern and southern hemisphere and i don't really know if there's a set way the planet's meant to go together but it does seem to line up on pretty much at least one side no matter how you combine these so i don't know if that's just some really well thought out design actually looking at naboo you can see there the planet is the exact same as if I were to flip it round. I only have one of Naboo, so this is definitely how the set comes. But maybe they just include two halves of the same build, which would be very interesting to see how the Death Star looks like that. We'll have to keep an eye on that going forward. But I have this base on the planet to stop it rolling around because it's going to be hard to display without it. And that just enables it to stand up. But we do also get this... Technic modified tile which you can loop some string to it attaches to the other side and in theory there's no reason why you wouldn't put it on because it doesn't hinder the build too much and you could probably even connect something else to it but these would look really good strung up above the models they are representing i'm going to move the planet out of view just whilst we talk about the rest of the model because it takes up quite a bit of the screen You'll notice I don't have my Lazy Susan out, so how are we going to get a 360 of every model? Well, because of the Technic pieces connecting the ship to the base, it allows it to spin a full 360 degrees anyway. But the minifigures just studded down, there's no extra piece to display them. They are just straight onto the studs, which, well, let's be honest, LEGO still does today. The UCS Salvage has a similar technique for displaying minifigures. It's got to be one of the best ways to display them. You get a better look at the mechanic holding up this N1, and this is taken straight 
from my Lego City as this is the RC that is being worked on in the garage. And the second one to be released was Sir Bulba's Pod Racer. A lot of these are very similar, so I'll try to speed through some of the designs. You can see Tatooine is not to be confused with Bespin, which is this sand colored planet we'll get to in a minute, but it is quite detailed. Again, I can't really see, there we are. Here's the pattern that we are looking for. Again, the top hemisphere is the exact same as the bottom. So this should be true 180 degrees. You can see that wind pattern. Perhaps they are just using the same piece for the top and bottom. So I'm definitely gonna try and get two of the tops of the Death Star to add to my collection. All right, I've just double checked. He's not exclusive to this set. He did come in another set the year before, but it's nice to be seeing the return of a minifigure in a much, much cheaper set than the Pod Racer. I still would have wished we got someone like Watto here, but then I guess I'd be saying the exact same thing about Saboba. The Pod Racer is really, really cool. There's a different connection holding this down. It's just a two by two jump up because we have this giant clear rod holding the entire Pod Race together. But I really, really do like this. And it definitely shows because the Saboba minifigure I have is actually missing his legs. They must have broken and I must have disregarded them. Nowadays, I just whack a bit of glue or blue tack and stick them down. But I have added these droid arms instead. The actual mold for Saboba is really, really cool. And hopefully, Lego can improve on this classic droid design because the connections are a bit weak. And I've noticed a bunch of my older battle droids, IG units, and even Saboba here have had the clips break over time, but I don't think that's anything LEGO are gonna solve anytime soon. Now, moving away from the prequels, we have a New Hope's TIE Interceptor. And like I said at the start, I don't have the Death Star to go with it. There would have been a planet, but I would like to take note of something else that I found really interesting when rebuilding them, because this May, we got an Interceptor in the poly bag and they're almost identical to one another there's definitely a few improvements and a few extra pieces over time but hopefully you can see that besides the use of round jumpers in place of the square jumpers and a different weapon on the side you couldn't really tell the difference between the two i do have to say there is also an improved technique to get in the bracket in the middle as well but this is definitely inspired off the old TIE Interceptor, the one we got earlier this year. And this TIE Interceptor, unlike the May 4th Polybag, did come with a TIE Pilot minifigure, which I'll be honest, I'm not fussed that this year's didn't come with a TIE Pilot because we've got so many sets, the TIE Bomber, the TIE Fighter, the TIE Interceptor, so many sets on shelves now that we can pick them up. And once again, I don't have the tile for this set, so I have printed out a sticker, and this was a test for a future project. I think it turned out pretty well, considering I just had the image of the base to go off. But I really like this tight Interceptor. I would have loved to have got this with the other five, but maybe one day I can find a Death Star. And you can't have an Interceptor without an X-Wing to fight against it. And the X-Wing looks almost as good as the Interceptor. The planet this one comes with, as you've seen, is Yavin 4, and we have an unnamed X-Wing pilot, but by the insignia on the helmet, it does match up to Dak Rautar from, I think he's in both A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. He's definitely in Empire Strikes Back in one of the snow speeders, so I'm not sure if he would have worn the same helmet in A New Hope, but it's a really neat model of X-Wing, a bit smaller than what we see for some of the poly bags nowadays, but some good use of technique. And that goes for all of these. They're nice small builds that are definitely what we'd see in a poly bag. It's great that we get that exclusive plaque for every single set and a minifigure, which I'd love to see done nowadays on top of the unique molded planet, which does seem to be two sides of the same design. From A New Hope, we move to Empire Strikes Back, specifically the twin pod cloud car. Our penultimate model is not to be confused with Tatooine, though I definitely think this is more of a Tatooine design. I don't know, I have to pay attention next time we see it pop up 
on our screens. But this comes with the only exclusive minifigure of the Wave in Lobot, which is a shame because I have two copies of this so you can get a better look at the plaque that comes with it. The Twin Pod Cloud Car, Lobot and Bespin. Again, they are really cool plaques to be getting in such cheap sets, but both of my Lobots have had their face rubbed off and it just looks to be general wear and tear. But what's interesting to note is the back of the head is completely fine as if nothing is wrong with it. Same with the torso and the back. So I don't know what I was doing to Lobot's head, but I think this is just because of the printing on the back. Perhaps they used a different sort of ink or it was just too small to have stayed on over time. I will be looking out for a replacement, but I think getting an exclusive minifigure in a set, not only this cheap, but also in a set as small as this. They definitely could have included someone like the actual pilot to the cloud car or one of Lando's security guards, but to get a named character, Lobot was really nice of them. And I don't think they made another Lobot for another six years until we got the giant Master Builder Cloud City set. So it was really nice of Lego to give us a minifigure like this without making us spend £40 around the May holidays or putting them as an exclusive bonus minifigure in a very expensive set. To finish up this series, we have Return of the Jedi's ATST. And to go alongside them, the Forest Moon of Endor, which is a really cool design. I like that even though some of these planets are a bit similar to each other, they have gone with completely different molds. We can see we've got this swell here, and if we can find it on the top, there we go. It does seem to be that all of these have the same two halves put together as a whole. But this ATST is similar to a few other designs we saw at the time. I think this has also been in some sort of May 4th poly bag, or at least a similar design. The ATST driver, the ATST pilot, I guess, does look pretty cool. And it does come with that dual molded head that we haven't seen, I think, throughout the rest of this series. I really like it when it's got its visor down. You can display it either way, but again, it just clips to the base. The difference with this one is that the ATST itself is what's holding it down on the base, and it doesn't really stand up on its own unless you position it to look up a bit and then you can find a balance point to have it on display. So it's nice that we get the plates to attach it to. And again, I'd love to see something like this, even in a microfighter. If Lego bought this to the microfighters, it just makes them seem a bit more valuable than they already are. And I can already see you asking in the comments, which one of these is my favorite and that's going to be really hard to do because I quite like the printed piece on the front of the ATST. Lobot is definitely one of the best minifigures from the wave for that exclusivity. I really like the combination of the tight interceptor and the X-Wing and then we have Sebulba who is a unique molded character but I'm actually going to go with the Royal N1 Starship because I have such fond memories of this, specifically the build itself. Whereas the rest of them relate to the minifigures or specific parts and combinations, I really like the model in this set. Not to mention Naboo is my favorite planet in the entire Star Wars galaxy. So there's definitely some bias there, but I have to give it to the Naboo pilot, Naboo and the Royal N1 Starfighter. So let me know yours down in the comments. And that is all for today's review. Again, definitely drop a like on the video, 100 likes, and I will build six for the anniversary minifigures. I hope you enjoyed. Check out all the videos on screen now. And as always, may the bricks be with you always.